Hello everybody. Hope you're having a great day. Um, <clears throat> we're going to work on Psalm 76 today, which is a psalm that almost nobody ever talks about. But it's interesting because it has this, um, this traditional use of being able to uh, bring money out of thin air. Um, so that's where it comes from. Uh, a lot of people uh, have written that it, that it can be used to win contests and lotteries and things like that. Um, uh, it's it's fascinating. So I want to I want to work with it, and we can we can see what what uh, what we can find. And before we do that, I want to just talk a little bit about why we do the Psalms. Um, you have to remember that in traditional witchcraft, the Psalms have been a mainstay of practice for as long as people know about about the craft. It's only in more recently, more, uh, more recent times, relatively modern times, that this whole um, sort of new age Wicca kind of thing, which is not bad. I'm not. It's not a criticism at all. Um, has sort of taken its own turn. There's a lot of um, sort of mythologies and stuff about the craft that have been that have been put forth. That um, the traditional craft didn't follow. I mean, so, so the the Psalms have always been. Well, if you think about it, I mean, just look at the, look at the Druids. Um, when they were finally uh, their 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 final their 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 their, their final run in with Caesar, were basically they were they were gone. They were wiped out. The Druids didn't just go away. <laughs> they they hid, right? They hid. Uh, they 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 uh, they they assumed. Them, they, they became part of the culture of the time, and when and when Rome became Christianized, the Druids were able to um, and and any of the traditional craft were were able to to adapt. And it's it's no it's it's it, there's there's no mystery how the Psalms became a, a favorite among the the craft. If you look at the origin of the Psalms, the um, if, if, if you really research it, I recommend that you do it. It's very difficult to find a scholar who's able to prove where the origin of a specific psalm is. They have some ideas, there are some agreements and disagreements, but as far as like actual proof of the origin of the psalms, there's a, there's a belief in the traditional craft, there's a tradition in it that the psalms predate the Hebraic faith, at least many of them do, if not the entire book. And then there's many Psalms that were excluded from the book as well, so there's more than 150. So there's many, many Psalms, and you can find other Psalms in the Apocrypha, uh, the ones that have survived. But remember that the, the, the Hebrews were a scribing people. So they, much like the, like the Christian monks of later years, who scribed down a lot of the Druidic lore, which was an oral tradition, the, the Hebrews scribed down a lot of this um, this tradition that was an oral tradition. And there is a tradition in the craft that states that the Psalms were not written by David, but adapted by whoever. It might have been written by David, adapted by David, but, but many, if not all, of the Psalms were adapted from earlier incantations. And there is a belief in that that they all have magical formulae inherent in them, and the, that that even when they were used in the in the in the Hebrew faith as sort of like, and they don't even know how they were used, but it seems like they were used a lot at festivals, and and they were almost like the libretto of like great operas. <laughs> and if you think about Wagner, Wagner wrote the Ring Cycle. That's a great opera. Um, but he, and yes, he wrote the libretto, but he didn't write the story, right? The story was traditional. The same thing is possibly true of the Psalms, at least tradition holds, that the Psalms existed long before, long before they, they, they showed up in this form, uh, in, in the form, well, in the, in the old, the, the, the form that, that were in the ancient languages that then later became translated into English into the books that we now read. Uh, and um, I mean, there's even there's even a tradition that the King James version of the Psalms is, and many many other uh, parts of that Bible were actually um, 
tr uh, translated and then and 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 written down by Shakespeare, or at least approved by Shakespeare. Who knows if that's true? But they do have a Shakespearean bent to them in the way that they are, the way that they are uh, written out in the King James Version, version, which is one of the reasons why I like using them as the incantation. But to study the psalm, sometimes it's easier to find a, a different version, a different, in, uh, different interpretation to study the psalms that are a little bit more clear and less poetic. Um, so when we go, when we try to find the deeper inner meanings of the psalms, we have to bypass a lot of our prejudice about the Bible. We have to bypass a lot of our prejudice about religion, and 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 recognize that this is truly a magical tradition right here, and it's probably one of the oldest texts in, in in western in the western magical tradition that is still in existence and still utilized and as we say um on a on a on a purely magical level in the akashic records which is that part of the mind where where all minds are joined the psalms have a a unique position over almost any other text in that they have been used successfully by a, a plethora of different cultures more cultures than than a lot of other ancient texts, which seem to stay stay focused within their own cultures. So the Psalms, when not only are you are you are you when you are uh, working with the Psalm, not only are you exploring and 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 uh, accessing the deep magical power that that is inherent in the compositions themselves, which is quite profound, but you are also accessing. Uh, all of the people who have utilized the, this book over the centuries, and these were written over at least five centuries, if not longer, uh, and, and more in, into antiquity, and then have been utilized by so many cultures since then, that they've built up quite a, a lot of power. And any, any, any witch that, that doesn't utilize the, the power of the Psalms is really missing out. So, and I understand that many of us were raised in, in religions and that, that utilized uh, the Bible and that we may have a prejudice, but it would behoove you to try to get beyond that. All right, so now Psalm 76, um, like I said, it deals with a lot of, of, of beautiful things. It is one of the prosperity Psalms, but it's one that's very rarely utilized. And I think one of the reasons why is because some of the symbolism in here is rather challenging. So we'll do our best. That the cool thing about the Psalms is that they are foolproof. You cannot go wrong with the Psalm. You will not get in trouble. There are no blinds. There is nothing that's going to happen that's bad. You are totally safe. But at the same time, there's nothing that's, that is more powerful than the Psalms that I've experienced that will always get a result. Now, what your um, remember in magic, every bit of magic has a price. And so within the Psalms, there is always you're, you're always clear on what the price that you will pay to get the blessing that is inherent in the psalm. And even if you don't get all of the inner meanings right, even if you even if you make some mistakes and you don't understand the interpretations and things like that, it's okay. It's the work itself that 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 builds the muscle. So even though you go to the gym and your form isn't exactly perfect, you're doing your best. You will build muscle. You may not ever look like that that you know that that a prime athlete but you will get more fit you will lose weight you will gain muscle just by just by doing your best and the same thing goes with the psalm so don't worry if you don't get it right the fact that you're doing it and you're doing your best you're going to build a magical muscle and you will get the blessing from the psalm the psalms always work all right, so Psalm 76. Let's see what 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 you get. Now, if you get money out of thin air or if you win the lottery or something, please let us know. We want to know about that. But that's not why we're, we're praying the psalm. We're praying the psalm to access the prosperity that is our birthright in whatever form it decides to show up for us. Okay? Psalm 76. In Judah is God known. Oh, I forgot to do. Let's do those talisman. I'm so sorry, you guys. You want the witchy stuff. <laughs> This is such a simple, simple operation that it's it's really easy to um, to kind of discount it if you uh, because it is so simple. Just I'm using green because today is on a yell, okay? So on Friday, so uh, 
and we're doing prosperity. So I'm just using a green pencil. That's one of the, the magical implements that you can get as a, as a collection of, of colored pens or pencils. Um, but do try to keep everything simple. All right, so then sign your name first. So you have a little opening in the circle, sign your name. I'm gonna call the name all viewers so that we're all included. All right, and then uh, we are going to first say peace because we want peace within whatever we're working. Peace should always be our primary goal. I put in a, a hyphen. Um, I'm going to do prosperity since that's what we've decided this is. And I'm actually going to say money. How about that? All right. So we've got three things, peace, prosperity, and money. And then all we do is close the circle. You see that? You just draw it close. And what we are asking, what we are doing in our deep mind, yes, it's symbolic, but it's also real, that we are trapping what these words mean to us, the energy of those words. We are trapping and focusing those words so that we can focus that energy into our lives. And today we have Anayel on Friday, so we're going to put her symbol at the four corners of the talisman as, a, as an invocational gesture. So now we have Anayel working with us on our behalf. All of us are getting peace, prosperity, and money. All right. So then I just give it two spritzes of, of uh, Verbena Cologne, also known as Van Van by a lot of people in magical traditions, especially hoodoo. And then I'm gonna give it one spritz of a rose cologne, just cause rose is sacred to Anaya. And those perfumes are always, always optional. Your, you, your um, success is maximal by just using the song. I forgot my lighter, so hang tight. Well, I get the magic lighter. Now, I am from the point of view that all of my magical implements should have a regular mundane purpose. So there's nothing that I have in my house that I use for magic that if somebody came across it would think anything of it. Nobody would think anything of the fact that I have a colored pencil. Nobody would think anything of the fact that I have cards or tea lights, or colognes, or perfumes, or a glass, or a book of psalms, right? That doesn't look too, too witchy. Now, if they saw the actual talisman, they might go, huh? You know, that's why I keep this particular thing private, and another reason why I don't like th more than three going at once, because it's easy to keep it private. Much easier to keep a few talismans private in a drawer somewhere than it is to have, you know, tons and tons of magical equipment that are very occult. Now again, that's just me. If you like having a lot of witchy stuff around, have at it. There's no law against it. All right. Psalm 76 for prosperity. You ready for the big bucks? Here we go. <laughs> in Judah is God known. His name is great in Israel. In Salem also is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. There break he the arrows of the bow, the shield, and the sword, and the battle. Selah. Thou art more glorious and excellent than the mountains of prey. The stout-hearted are spoiled. They have slept their sleep, and none of the men might have found their hands. That's not right. And none of the men of might have found their hands. So that, let's just do that verse again. The stout-hearted are spoiled. They have slept their sleep, and none of the men of might have found their hands. At thy rebuke, O God of Jacob, both the chariot and horse are cast into a deep sleep. Thou, even thou, art to be feared, and who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry? Thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still. When God arose to judgment to save all the meek of the earth, Selah. Surely the wrath of men shall praise thee. The remainder of wrath shalt thou restrain. Vow and pay unto the Lord your God. Let all that be round about him bring presents unto him that ought to be feared. He shall cut off the spirit of princes. He is terrible to the kings of the earth. 
my, that's a lot to deal with. That's some very challenging symbolism. So we're going to do our best to get through this and to find the, at least some of those inner meetings and unlock that promised prosperity. All right. Okay. In Judah is God known. His name is great in Israel. So Judah is the part of the mind. So these are cities. Okay. And these cities are in your mind. Everything in personal magic is to be taken personally. So, so all of this, anything in the book of Psalms, when you're using it for magical purposes, represent a different part of your deep mind, part of your personality, a part of your energy system. It's all to be taken very, very personally. So Judah is the city that is, that, that brings praise. All right. So in Judah is God known. His name is great in Israel. Israel is the, um, is the exalted city, is the anointed city. So in order for you to, in order for you to enter into no, the knowledge of God, that is done through praise. Okay. And then, and, and then we acknowledge that God's name or nature, the nature of God is great in Israel, in the most exalted parts of your mind. So you lift up your mind through praise, and then you find the, the nature of God in Israel, which is dwelling inside your mind, if you were created that way. In Salem also is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. So God lives in, Sa in Zion, and his tabernacle is in Salem. So the way to get to... Um, the way to get to God and into his dwelling place in Zion. Zion is that, that holy city on the hill. That's your super conscious mind. That's the, the pinnacle of who you are as a soul. That is your God self, right? That's Zion. Salem, some people might say Jerusalem is, is synonymous with that. But in the Bible, Salem is a place where a king came, came from called Melchizedek. And Melchizedek is known as the savior of the angels. So in Salem is his tabernacle. So you're going to find the tabernacle of God where the angels are. And his dwelling place is in Zion. You, you will find God dwelling in your, own, uh, in your own highest self. There break he the arrows of the bow, the shield, and the sword, and the battle. Selah. Selah means think on these things. So, so God broke the arrows of all war. Um, and the battle. Sorry about that. I got a I got a call. Should have turned off my phone, but oh well. And it was spam. Wouldn't you know? So so God broke all the war. And he so there is no war when you rise up above the battlefield to the the dwelling place of the Almighty, which is in your mind. And, and so, so, so the, the higher you, basically, the higher you raise your vibrations, the less war that, that you will have to contend with. Thou art more, and, and wars don't necessarily mean wars with people. They can mean wars with your finances, wars battling with anything in the three-dimensional world or within your mind. So all those battles are eliminated um, as you rise up in consciousness. So that's a secret. Right. If there's a something you're battling with, you need to rise in consciousness. It's time for you to do some magic. Thou art more glorious and excellent than the mountains of prey. So the mountains of prey, mountains mean several things in, in the Bible. They can mean uh, exalted places, but in this case, they are mountains of prey. So they're large. They're large situations. They're large problems. Th seems that things that seem insurmountable in your life. Mountains also in the Bible, in the, in the Psalms, can mean governments, governments. So governments of prey, mountains of prey. So, so difficult situations, difficult mountainous situations, that could be, mean debt, that can mean disease, that can mean all kinds of you know, relationship problems. Um, but mountains of prey also can mean corrupt governments, corrupt governments. And since we're talking about something personally, yes, we, we, you know, we, we, we don't want corrupt governments in the, in, the, in the world, but what are our corrupt governments inside of us? Where are we corrupt? Where are we um, corrupt? Our own corrupt governments are when we are not honest with, with, with our dealings with one another, when we harbor uh, resentments against one another, when we gossip about one another, when we steal, even, you know, even whatever, all, all, of, the, all of the ways that we, that we are corrupt as, as people, all those thought forms within our own mind. 
So it's saying that God is more glorious and excellent than all the mountains of prey, whether those be big situations or, or, or um, corrupt parts of ourselves, that we can rise out of all of the, all of the mountains of prey by just realizing what's glorious and excellent. And that is that 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 takes us completely out of uh, of the effect of the mountains of prey. The stout-hearted are spoiled; they have slept their sleep, and none of the men of might have found their hands. Okay, stout-hearted <clears throat> can mean proud, right, and courageous, but it also can mean stubborn and arrogant and and puffed up. So when you're stout-hearted. Yes, courageous is great as long as you know that your courage comes from the infinite intelligence. But when you think you yourself as an individual mind are are all powerful or are courageous or of yourself that you are that you are something special, that kind of stout hearted will be spoiled. Now, on one hand, you are spoiled like a spoiled child. So that has that could have a double meaning. But I think in here that the stout hearted are spoiled. They've slept their sleep. And none of the men of might have found their hands. Now, when you have not found your hands, then you have no, you've found nothing of value to contribute to the world. So it's as if all of that, all of your, all of your stout-heartedness has done nothing but, 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 but waste time sleeping. You've done nothing but waste time and you have nothing to show for it. Now, how many times have you wasted a, 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 long, a long period of time or even a short period of time obsessing over things that don't even matter, that in the long run had absolutely no, no, no positive use in the world, did not contribute anything? Well, luckily, when, when the, uh, the, the glorious and excellent part of the, 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 the source of all the life is uh, overcoming the mountains of prey, they are also, he's also, it's also spoiling the stout-hearted part of who you are that causes your sleep, uh, that, 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 that creates absolutely nothing of value. All right, so, so you're being risen out of all of that time-wasting and life-wastingness and all of that arrogance. At thy rebuke, O God of Jacob, both the chariot and horse are cast into a dead sleep. Okay, so the the chariot and the horse are the is the is not only the, the is the transportation. So the stout-hearted, not only are they um, are, are they cast uh, out along with the mountains of prey, but their their ability to return is gone because God has has caused the um, the chariot and the, the 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 horse to fall asleep, a deep sleep. Now, in the psalm, a deep sleep can mean death, can mean like eternal death, because in um, in in the 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 sheol in the in the old faith, when you die, you just kind of go into a state of suspended animation, and there's nothing else. You're just asleep, and then you're you're done. <clears throat> so. Um, so this is basically telling us that that not only are we going to have all of those tendencies removed, but their way of return will be killed. So that's that's actually quite good news. Thou, even thou, art to be feared, and who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry? So the anger of God and the fear of God, right? So when we, the fear of God means respect, deep, reverent respect. It's much like the way that, that a, an a electrician or electronics engineer would have respect for live current. Now, if you're, look, if you're working with live electrical current, you have a very deep respect for it. And that kind of fear of, of live current makes sure that you don't make mistakes and makes sure that you're working with it respectfully. It's not that you're like, <gasps> afraid of, of electricity. It's that you have a respect, a reverent respect for it so that you can use it, so that it can be useful in your life. That's the same thing that we have with God. We want God to be useful in our life. And so then we have a very deep respect for the, for, for the, the ultimate power of the universe, right? Now, uh, who may stand in thy sight when once thou get angry? Very much like the electricity, if you misuse it, it's as if electricity got angry and it electrocuted you. Well, 
it, it's not that electricity was angry, it just appears that way to the ignorant person who utilized it and didn't know what they were doing. And so the same way that when someone, uh, who may stand in thy sight when once thou gets angry, the only people that can stand in the sight of God when he's appearing to be angry is the parts of ourselves that recognize that that's, there's no anger in God. There is nothing to fear in God. God is pure, pure light and is the pure life principle. It, and as pure light, the only thing that can be afraid of God would be darkness. Because if there's anything that, uh, that uh, it makes it appear as though God is angry with you, that part of you that fears that God is angry is the dark part of you that is being dispelled. So recognize that, that sometimes when we, when we do operations, it looks like, <gasps> what's happening? It looks like things are just shaken up. And what you do is you bless that. When you see the major movement happen, and even though it seems scary, recognize that, the, that what's happening is the darkness is being dissipated so that your objective can be realized. And so then you want to praise that. Remember, that's, how you, that's our, our opening is we want praise. So when, when things start to break up, you go, woo, it's working, yay. And, and all of the parts of you that might be afraid are the dark parts of you that need to leave anyway, because those are the dark parts of you that were, that were the problem to begin with. That would have been that are standing in the way of you res, uh, of you uh, realizing your desire. <clears throat> Hopefully that makes sense. Thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still. It's the same idea. When when you when you when you are like okay like this today we we're saying we want money. We want a large, good steady, solid increase in our financial income. And that's our right to have. There's nothing wrong with that. We're not stealing it from anybody. We're not being greedy. We just want the prosperity that is our due as children of, of God, as children of the, of the realm, of, 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 this, uh, of the house of God. In other words, we are of royal heritage, right? Each and every one of us is, and we have that right. So now we're doing some magic and we're gonna make that happen. And when that happens, says, uh, thou didst cause judgment to be heard from he heaven, the earth feared and was still. Now, judgment is something that we want because j God's judgment is always that he loves you. God's judgment is always that you're fabulous. God's judgment is always that you deserve to have every good thing. That's God's judgment. Now, all of the dark parts of you that don't like that, that don't want that, that are trying to keep you stuck, are gonna be freaked out by that. And, and when you start seeing things open up and break up right before your very eyes, those parts of you are going to be afraid. But it says, the earth feared. Now, the earth, meaning the, your physical world, the earth feared, everything's going to go, ah, and then be still. It's going to go, ah, and then settle down into the realization of your desire. So when you see a little thing breaking up, recognize that it's only for a second, and then it will be still. And what, 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 it, what remains is the manifestation of your great desire, right? It may or may not come in the form that you thought it would come in, but the blessing is assured. I promise it all always works. Okay. When God arose to judgment to save all the meek of the earth, see law. Okay. Again, we want God to, raise, uh, to arise to judgment because when God arises to judgment, we know that he's going to say, you're fabulous, you're wealthy, you can have what you asked for, I love you, there's nothing that's too good for you. That's his judgment to save all the meek of the earth. So in order to be saved, you must be meek. Meek means well-trained. Meek is, this is where one of those words... That, it, that, that if you don't understand what it means, you don't get it. Meek means adept, means that you're an adept, a magical adept. That means that you, that you train your mind. So you are trained to not respond with fear to the things of the world because you know there is nothing to fear. You do not fear because you know that you have at your disposal all power. And so you can you, you have at your disposal the, the command of all 
of the all of the 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 the, the, the physical earth. It's all under your feet. There are many, many, many promises in these psalms how this world is here for your benefit. So there's nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear. That's meek. When you start reacting with fear and upset and, and getting get you know fighting and and, and and warring with the with the with the things of this earth, you are untrained. You are not an adept, and then you do not get your desire. All right, makes sense. Surely the wrath of men shall praise thee; the remainder of wrath shalt thou restrain. So, what this is telling you is that if there is, if you are upset and angry or, or distraught over a condition in your life, take that wrath and t just all you, you don't have to worry about getting rid of it. That will be taken care of for you. But instead of focusing that wrath on the situation, turn and focus it on God. Start focusing it on the prime power of the universe and God will use that to your benefit. What it, that will turn to praise. The wrath will turn to praise and the remainder of the wrath that's not been turned to praise, God will take care of. So all you have to do is turn your, your, your focus away from the problem and on God. And the problem will disappear and something wonderful and glorious will be in its place. That is that promise right there. Um, now what? Oh, thou and pay unto the Lord your God. Let all that be round about him bring presents unto him that ought to be feared. Now, again, we talked about the, the fear of God, the respect of God. How do you actually, I mean, what is God really, what, what can he use? Does he really want sacrifices? Does he really want you to put out like, like food for him and, and drink for him? Is that really going to satisfy him? Does he need you to do that? Is that how he really needs you to, to bring presents to him? Maybe. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. You can't, I mean, you can do that. And yes, you can tithe. That's a very, that's a very good thing to do. But God doesn't need anything from us like that. God can have whatever God needs. God is the, the source of all, right? So even the tithe, God doesn't need your money. You need to give your money in order to start the flow of prosperity. So yes, you should tithe for your benefit, not for God's. God doesn't need it. But he's given you an opportunity to get that prime, that, that pump primed and, and get the flow going so that you can become wealthy. So yes, you should be giving. You should, wherever you want to receive, that's where you should be giving. So if you need more money, you should be giving money. And I'm not, you know, we don't say you should give to a specific church or whatever, but you should give to the works of God without expecting anything in return. So wherever you feel like the work of God is being done the most, and that can be anything. Again, God doesn't mean the Abrahamic God. That it, 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 it can be any 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 manifestation of what you think good is in the world, what God is, right? So yes, you should give your your money, but m beyond that, where can God really use your use you? Where does God really get the most benefit from you? How you treat His children. So the best thing you can do to pay unto the Lord and bow unto the Lord and bring presence unto the Lord is the way that you treat other people, the way you think about other people, the way you react to other people, the way you are with, with the children of God. Because we are all of one mind. We are all the son of man, according to the, the Psalms. So we are all of one mind. And so whatever you do to one person, you're doing to everybody and you're doing to God. So how you treat other people is how you treat God. That's what this is talking about. So here's a cool tool for you to use. I want you to try this if you can, especially if you're having any problems whatsoever. This will, this will get, get the, everything started for you. Um, get any kind of uh, either a, a pop culture magazine or a news magazine or a, a version of that online where there's lots of pictures of people that are well known to you, some of which you might admire, some of which you might not know, and some of which you might loathe, okay? And that's all, it's all fine, regardless. And you just go through and very impersonally, you take one picture at a time, if you know their name, you can mention their name, and you simply say the words, I bless you and I sincerely wish for you all the blessings of life. 
and then you go to the next picture. I bless you so and so, and I sincerely wish for you all the blessings of life. And then you go to the next picture. I sincerely, I'm sorry, I bless you so and so, and I sincerely wish for you all the blessings of life. And you do that for a minute or two. You know, don't, don't strain. And try to do that once or twice a day for a while so that you get into this conditioning of, of not only forgiveness, but of blessing. Uh, the, uh, the blessing the blessing the children of God, it will help you when it comes to the important people in your life. Because the important people in your life are a lot harder sometimes to forgive if they've really wronged you. But see, if you've done it impersonally with people you don't know, then you are conditioned to doing it, period. And then you can keep that same impersonal forgiveness and apply it toward people that seem to be more important for you. And that is one way that you can vow and pay unto the Lord your God. Let all that round about him bring presents unto him that ought to be feared. That's how you respect God. Okay? And then the last little verse here is, He shall cut off the spirit of princes. He is terrible to the kings of the earth. Okay, so now the, the princes, the princes are heirs to the throne. Right, so so back in, 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 in these days, it's a, it was a pa patrilineal um monarchy, which most of them still are, the, the monarchs that are still around, monarchies that still are. So the princes are the uh, usually the heir apparent to the throne. Well, if he cuts off the spirit of the princes, then he's being very terrible to the kings of the earth. Now inside of you, there are monarchs and there are whole houses of monarchies that are out to destroy you that are, are very evil thought forms, matrices of thought forms that, that are out to make sure that you don't get the money you want, that don't get, get the things that you want. And these, these negative thought forms are very, very ancient and powerful. Good news. When you're doing a psalm like this, the spirit of all, the, the infinite spirit, infinite intelligence, infinite love, and the life principle itself, that which causes your heart to beat, that which causes the, the planets to revolve around the sun, that which is that causes embryos to become babies, that which causes all the galaxies and all the expanses of space. There is only one power, that power that can be called by any name that is not, uh, that is not um, beholden to any one religion or any one faith. That power is very personally interested in you, and that power, when invited, will cut off the spirit of the princes, of the monarchies, inside your being and your deep mind that have been holding back all of your good. Isn't that awesome? So that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So say this psalm. Try to do it, try to come back to it over and over again. Do your best. It doesn't matter if you get it all right. And I don't, I don't always get it right either. I mean, we, we're all learning. But there's mysteries in here. And see what happens. And see what happens when you, have that, when you have that intention for financial prosperity. We're very clear here that this isn't just general prosperity. We want financial prosperity. And so money out of thin air is what, is what a lot of people use this psalm for. They use it for lotteries and things like that. I'm not saying that you should go play the lottery because this is going to make you win the lottery. I'm saying that, you, that pray this for financial prosperity and let's see what happens. And keep at it until you get what you want. Knock and it will be opened unto you. Seek and you shall find. Call and it shall be answered. So you just keep on it. Be a... Be a, a, a annoying to God, right? Just annoy God until you get what you want. Keep wrestling with the angel until it gives you the blessing over and over and over and over again. That's what Jacob is. Jacob is your, is, is it your own self inside that, that one quality inside of yourself that's not going to give up. That's just going to keep going and going until it gets the blessing that it desires. Once you get that blessing, you know what happens? You're renamed. You're no longer named Jacob. You're named Israel. And in biblical terminology, which I, again, believe is based on older prayers and incantations and renamed according to the, to, but that's just my theory. And that's the tradition that, that is held in, in the magical use of the Psalms. But even if that's, whether or not that's true, 
Israel is, is what you become when you're no longer a seeker, but a receiver of, of divine grace. So keep at it until you get what you want. You deserve it. I love you very much. I can't wait to see you again. Blessed be. Thank you.